Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools, and I'm back again with another tutorial. And in this lesson, what I want to do is I want to show you how we're going to start to create more complex composites inside of DaVinci's Resolve using a third-party application, Mocha Pro, and one third-party plugin to create this quite complex composite. But when I show you how straightforward and how easy it is, you're going to be able to take your work to the next level using the tools that you have at your disposal and these fantastic elements from Rampant Design Tools. So let's talk about these elements specifically. I'm using elements from the Distortion and Grunge product line of Rampant Design Tools. And if you head on over to their website to the Distortion and Grunge section and you scroll down, we are going to be using elements from the Distortion Toolkit. Now, right off the bat, I got to say, 2500 plus distortion and glitch effects can you believe that that's absolutely staggering when we head to that specific section of the website you'll see if i scroll down you can get all of these elements for as low as 99 dollars for the 2k versions now for me i got to be honest with you my favorite version of this package is the 4k mac or pc drive not only do you get all of those elements in 4k and let me remind you that's over 1.5 terabytes worth of elements you also get them on this very cool very portable rampant design tools hard drive that you can plug in on your local machine at home or stick it in your bag take it with you wherever you're doing your work around the globe okay so let's now talk about how i specifically got in and created this look the first place that I headed to was Mocha Pro. If I need to do any tracking, Mocha Pro is my tracking application of choice. But what's important to keep in mind is that Mocha Pro doesn't interact directly with Resolve. So we need to be a little bit creative in how we're going to do this. Now, what I did was I did an initial track. I'm just going to turn it on here. You'll see I got a little bit wide in the track here just to track the computer screen itself. And once I had done that, I added another mask element right here. You'll see that if I zoom in, you can see that what I more or less created was the rounded edges of the TV screen. Because to be honest, I hate doing chroma key. So I try to avoid it as much as I can. So what I wanted to do here was to basically mimic the edges of a TV. And you'll see that if I turn on the matte layers of my element here, I'm just going to turn on the layer. That's the layer that I was actually specifically working with. You can see that this is going to create a screen overlay when we export the shape information to work with inside of Resolve. What I also did once I had finished doing that as I got in and I set my planar surface just outside of that so that when we add the screen and we add the tracked element in, it's going to track and match this screen perfectly. Okay, I'm just going to hide out of Mocha Pro and what I had done once I was done with that mat, I'm just going to come into my footage folder. I'm going to come into my Artbeats folder and you'll see that I have a folder called Matte and here is my element here. And what's important to keep in mind is that anything that is white is going to be our image. It's not going to be a cutout. Anything that's black is going to be cut out and it's going to be transparent. We're going to be able to see through that element to what we're going to have tracked in the background. Now we're going to use this mat inside of Resolve to cut out our computer screen image. Okay, so let's get this all set up now. Now what I've done is I've prepped all of my footage into one folder here and I called it appropriately enough Rampant Design Tools Distortion Toolkit. Here's all of the elements that we're going to be working with. You'll see that we have a couple footage shots here. Very nice. These are courtesy of Artbeats. I want to give a big shout out to them. You can check out all of their footage at artbeats.com. So there's my matte element. And here are some of the distortion effects that I decided to use. Now, this is just a distortion stream. You'll see that if I play that back again here, we'll just jump back to the beginning. Just a little bit of digital breakup. There we go. And I also wanted to have a couple shots. So by having a couple shots, I needed to have a transition between one shot and the other. And what I really like, and this is one thing that I was a huge fan of, and I noticed it right away when I went into this product line, is I love these screen effects to mimic what's actually happening on a real, whether it's a, you know, a computer screen, whether it's an LCD TV, there's a whole ton of these on there to mimic real world situations especially once, for example, like you're looking at a computer screen. And last but certainly not least, we have our background plate again. This is courtesy of Artbeats. 
Very cool. Okay, so let's now get into Resolve and let me show you how we're going to do this. All right, so Command or Alt and Tab into DaVinci Resolve and here are all of the elements that are inside that folder. Of course, as always, we can skim over top of any of them. There we go. Okay. Now, we're going to bring in all of these elements except one and I'm going to show you why in just a second. Now I don't need to bring in obviously that folder so let's just make sure we're only bringing in the elements we need and I'm going to deselect the mat for computer screen. Okay we'll bring everything else in. we'll just drag and drop it in. Now with this element we need to bring it in a little bit differently because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this element as a mat in our composite. So to do that, we need to bring it in a little bit of a different way. It's actually fairly straightforward. What we're going to do instead of dragging and dropping it into our project is I'm going to right click on this element and we're going to add to the media pool as a matte element. Now, as soon as I do, it doesn't really look like anything has changed. Everything kind of looks the same, except if you notice in the lower left hand corner, you'll see that we have a little matte icon much like we have inside of Adobe's Photoshop. So this represents that this element can be used as a mat. Okay, let's now get into our timeline and let's create our distortion look. So I'm going to take a couple of these elements. Now the first thing I actually need to do is we're just going to put our plate in just so that we can get the timing of our two pieces of media here. Because I think we're going to take it to about the halfway point. Kind of to about there I think is pretty good. And the next shot we'll just drop in and we'll take this to the end. Okay, so let's now just, I think I'll just slide it out of the way. I won't delete it because we're going to come back and use it in just a second. Okay, now the first thing that I always like to set up with these shots is the overall look. Now the overall look that we're going for is one of these two screenshots here. Now you'll see that the difference between the two of them is in one of them, and I'm just going to call them the pixels just for the sake of argument. The pixels in one are a lot larger than the pixels in the other. Now for me, this is sort of the look that I would associate with a computer screen. So what I'm going to do is drag this element down over top of the entire timeline. With the element in the timeline, I'm just going to come back. We're going to come to our composite mode and I'm going to come down to the multiply composite mode. Now, one thing that's also important to keep in mind is that many elements inside of the rampant design tools libraries already come with alpha channels. So the best part is, is that you get the choice of how you want to work. Do you want to work with those alpha channels? Do you not want to work with those alpha channels? If you don't, you can simply switch them off. Now, the question of course is, how do you actually go about switching those alpha channels off? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select one of the elements in the media pool. Why don't we just go with the one that I already have selected and I'm going to right click on it. If I head on down to my clips attributes, you'll notice right down here at the bottom, the alpha mode is set to none. If this element had an alpha channel, now I went and re-rendered them without alpha channels because I didn't want the alpha channels in there. I could easily switch that back and forth between pre-multiplied and none. Okay, so this is how you're going to get in and either turn the alpha on or turn it off depending on how you want to work. Again, another fantastic feature inside of the Rampant Design Tools library is that you get to work really how you want to work with these great elements. Okay, I'm just going to cancel out of that. And with this element now on there, it's looking a little bit too predominant. So let's just make sure that we just back off on that opacity just a little bit to about there. I think that looks good. And what we can also do at any point is I can right click on the clip. Now you'll notice that D is the shortcut on both Mac and Windows. And we can turn that element on and off so we can see a before and after of what this is going to look like. Now obviously keep in mind that once we add the element on like such, what we might want to do is we might want to head into the color module here and come in and adjust things like maybe the midtones. Okay of our clip, and I'll just give it a little bit of saturation back here. That's looking pretty good. I think that's looking very nice. And we can come back now and I can select the first shot as well here. And let's just do the same thing. I'll just bring the mids up a little bit. We'll just give it a little bit of saturation back here. And you'll see that this is now looking a little bit better with the little bit added darkness that comes along with that element. You know what? I got to be honest, these screen elements are some of my favorite and anytime I get in and have to do screen replacement with anything, I'm always going to this specific package 
to find these great elements. Okay, now let's put a few more distortion elements in, and I think I'm gonna go with the transition next. I'm just going to find the transition here. There it is, I'm gonna drop it into my timeline again. Come to the video layer below the one you wanna add and drag up to create that layer now. You'll also notice that what's happening is, is I've got snapping turned on. You'll see that I'm snapping to these edit points. What I can do is simply hit the N key on both Mac and Windows, N as in snapping, I mean N as in Nancy. And what we can now do is just drag along right to the point where we're gonna wanna have this distortion full screen. Now, the other beauty part with this is that if I put an additive transfer mode to this, we can really get a good idea of where it's at its brightest, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of a secret here. To be honest, with these elements, it doesn't even matter if the element goes full screen. I always see people taking these and doubling up and tripling them up so that the background disappears completely. But what's important to keep in mind is that if you play this, you'll see that you don't even notice that it doesn't go full screen when that transition happens. Just a very simple yet effective transition. Now, what I also want to do here is just take this distortion stream and I'm just going to put it in right before now I should turn snapping back on here just so we can snap that element right there I'm going to copy the element so this way we get a little bit more of a smoother transition out the transition comes in really hard with that distortion and then it's going to kind of trail off a little bit with these distortion streams now again you can get in and choose whichever one you want and of course I should point out as well and I try to talk about this in all of my tutorials that if you want to get in and have a very good and simple way to get in and check out all of these elements without having to actually import them into an application like Resolve or After Effects or Premiere, I highly encourage you to check out the Rampant Previewer app that you can download from the App Store for iOS devices. This fantastic app is not only simple to use, it gives you a preview of just about every product across the entire Rampant Design Tools product line it's also super tiny. I think it comes in at about three and a half megabytes, but the beauty part is, is that wherever you have a Wi-Fi connection, whether it's at your house or even at the Starbucks down the street, have your grande latte and check out your rampant design tools elements. Okay, now I should also make sure that I switch the composite mode on these to an additive transfer mode before I play that back here. And there we go. Very cool. And what you could even do if you want is overlap these elements a little bit. Stick them up onto the topmost layer to get the smoothest transition into these, just like such. Very cool. Okay, so I think I'm good with the background elements. So let's now get in and create the composite with the track. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of these elements, I'm gonna select them all, we're gonna right click on them, and we're gonna make a new compound clip, okay? I'm just gonna call this track element. Okay, we'll say create. What I'm gonna do is just zoom back here so that we can get our chroma key, use that as the topmost layer. What we're gonna do is we're gonna head on over to the color module here and let's just grab our node, drag it down a little bit here. And what I'd like to do now is to add that matte element. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on the node and we're gonna come down to add matte. Now the matte that we would like to get in and add is a timeline matte and it's the matte for computer screen. Now, once I do that, you're gonna notice immediately that our screen has turned gray, showing me that the matte is actually doing what we expect it to do, okay? The only problem is, is that if I head back to the edit module, you'll see that nothing has happened yet. The reason being is that we still need to output this alpha channel to get it to actually appear in our timeline. I'm gonna right click inside the background, and what we're gonna do is we're going to add an alpha output. I'm gonna grab the alpha channel from our main element. I'm gonna drag it into that alpha output and immediately you'll see now that this element has become transparent, directly reflective of the matte element that we've added there. The only problem is, is that if I come back to the edit module, all it has done is cut out the screen. It hasn't actually done the track or hasn't applied the track to our clip. So how do we go about doing that? Well, let's head back to the color module and let's select our background clip, okay? Now this is where we're gonna require a third party effect and it's one from Boris Effects and it's their corner pin motion tracking effect. The reason being is that we can use that effect as a conduit to bring in that mocha tracking data directly into Resolve, okay? Now you'll see that I already have it called up here, BCC Corner Pin. I'm simply gonna take it and drag it and drop it down onto our clip. 
Now you'll see as soon as I do, the corner pin is now represented in the node, but what we need to do is we need to bring in that element. You can actually see it right here. If I switch back to the edit module here, you'll see if you look very closely that we actually have an image doubled up here, which is not exactly what we want, okay? We want to get that tracking information to corner pin that information to where we had it inside of Mocha Pro. So what we're going to do with that clip selected, and this clip selected is I'm going to navigate all the way down to the bottom of the corner pin effect here, and we're going to twirl down the motion tracker parameter. We're going to head to the tracker data, and I'm going to load up our tracking information that's located on our desktop. I'm going to select the Mocha track, and I'm going to say open, and as soon as I do, you'll now see that that information has been corner pinned to where I had it in Mocha Pro. You'll see that we also have our motion paths on there that I do not want to see, so I'm just going to turn those off. And we're now going to head back to the edit module, and if I hit play, you'll now see that we have our footage tracked onto our computer screen with that fantastic rampant design tools distortion effects put on there just like it was shot like that, and nobody would be the wiser. All right, so I hope this tutorial has shown you that with a little help from some third-party products, you can create very realistic composites inside of DaVinci Resolve using some fantastic rampant design tools, elements, and a little bit of creativity. All right, now don't forget, if you want some great free 4K elements, head on over and check them out at 4kfree.com. And to check out the entire rampant design tools product line, you can head on over and check them out at rampantdesigntools.com. Thank you.